Sammy Davis lived his entire life as though he knew it would one day end up as a musical. <laughs> <laughs> lots of drama, lots of comedy, great amounts of comedy, and a thousand songs. Edie and I, my wife Edie and I met him when he first came to London in the early 60s. And with the timing of the gods, it happened that Tony Newley and I had just opened our first musical in the West End. It was called Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. Sammy came, <laughs> Sammy came to London that week and was about to open at the Prince of Wales Theatre just up the street from us. And because he hadn't already opened, he came to see Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. And he was the first person to record the songs. And he was the man who brought the songs to America before the show came over and caused it to become a hit on Broadway. And he won the Grammy Award for us for What Kind of Fool Am I as the best song that year. Um, over the years, Sammy recorded more of my songs than anybody ever. He recorded over 60 songs. And everything Tony and I wrote, or I wrote on my own, Sammy was the first one in there winkle picking to see what he could recall. <laughs> and Evie and I worked out that we saw him perform between four and five hundred times all over the world. London, Paris, Monaco, New York, Miami, Vegas, God knows how many times in Vegas, <laughs> LA, Mexico, Puerto Rico. We, we went on many adventures together and did a lot of stuff together. And he was fabulous. He was the best company in the world as uh, Kim Novak says in the course of the show, he was a remarkable man in many, many ways. He made a lot of mistakes in his life, and we deal with that in the show. It wasn't just all song and dance. Um, <coughs> but he emerged at the end of it. When he died, I brought up a songbook called the Sammy Davis Songbook, which had a lot of my songs in it and a lot of the other great songs that he made famous, like that old Black Magic and Mr. Bo Daniels. And Michael Jackson, Sammy was Michael's hero. I met Michael when he was seven, with the Jackson Five in Vegas, and Sammy was his mentor. He used to watch Sammy in the wings, every performance he gave. And so in a way, Sammy was Michael Jackson's godfather. And in the songbook, Michael wrote a little song called, You Were There which said, I am here because you were there. Very moving. And Michael's life very much reflected Sammy's life. He had the same problems. Did he want to be black or white? And that has carried on to that generation. Anyway, in the songbook, a lot of Sammy's friends wrote introductions for me. Sinatra wrote a beautiful piece, uh, Liza Minnelli, Shirley MacLaine, and above all, Quincy Jones. Quincy had met Frank, uh, uh, had met Sammy in Seattle when Quincy was 12 and Sammy was 20, so they were lifelong friends. Sammy uh, became great pals with Quincy and Ray Charles, who also came from Seattle. So they were all part of that lifelong network. And one night, about a year after I brought the song out, Quincy called Evie and me in the middle of the night. We were in France and he said, this has got to be a musical. This book, I've been looking at the song, this has got to be a musical. And Quincy, as usual, was right. And it's been a long road to, to put it together. But what, it, what, what emerged and continues to emerge about Sammy, he was one of the great breed of African-American heroes in this country. Jesse Owens, uh, Jackie Robinson, Arthur Ashe, Martin Luther King, Tiger Woods, the young man called Barack Obama, <laughs> the Williams sisters in tennis, Serena's gonna win it again this year. <laughs> um, Sammy belongs in that pantheon of the people who were treated shabbily, survived prejudice, and went from being second-class citizens to first-class heroes. 